Hey everyone, my name is Kayla and welcome back to my channel. So if you have found yourself here today, that means you are looking for the perfect way to flip your IKEA Kallax shelf. Kallax? Is it Kallax or a Kallax shelf? Either way, I'm glad you're here. All right, so you may have seen my video where I've done my very own Kallax flip and I'll link it below if you haven't. But since I've posted this video, I've received an insane amount of feedback, comments, and people just love this flip. And right now, it is literally the most popular video on my channel. So I decided to come back to you with some of my favorite IKEA Kallax flips. Now what I've done is picked out my top five favorite IKEA Kallax flips, and I'm gonna walk you through step by step, hopefully just giving you one space to come and view multiple options for this specific piece. And this list is also gonna be very beginner friendly as well. I personally think that the Kallax shelf is really unique because it's so minimalistic to start with and it allows you so many different options and variations to customize this piece for your home. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now to watch the full videos from these DIYers, I'm gonna link all of the videos that I'm referencing below and you can watch their tutorial in full. I also have to preface this by saying that this list is in no specific order. Let's get started with number five. So right off the bat, I say this every time I see this design, I love this color. Now of course, color doesn't mean that you have to use this design, but I specifically enjoy the very minimalistic yet very unique style of this collect shelf. Now something I think that you're gonna find very helpful for this specific design is no power tools. Now of course you can use a drill, but if you have a screwdriver, you can use it by hand as well. But I'm specifically talking about a power saw. Now Kristen uses these wood slats to go across the front for that detail. And because those pieces are so delicate, you don't need a power saw to cut them. As a matter of fact, you can use a hand saw, which is typically like $10 from a home improvement store. Second thing I love about this is actually something that I wish I had known before. So one of the more difficult parts of building my Kallax hack shelf, <laughs> one of the more difficult parts of building my Kallax shelf was the cabinet doors that I had to build. That actually was the worst part for me. And I don't know if it's because like I'm measurementally challenged, but regardless, I actually had to scrap my doors and start them all over from the beginning because that was just hard for me. But with Kristen's unit, it looks like she had ordered her Kallax shelf to actually come with the little cubbies that go in those pockets. Normally you see people and they have them there blank like this but hers actually came with those little cubbies. So that was cool because all she did was she started off with, you know, you start off with, with eight cubbies. You have four across the top and four across the bottom. Well, she just connected two pairs of her cubbies four times. So it made four cabinet doors. So basically she just took a top and bottom cubby and she attached like those wood slats, those vertical wood slats. And so it made one long door. That's so genius. Now, I'm not really sure on the cost of getting your Kallax shelf with the cubbies or how you do that, but please go check out her video because I believe this will help save you a lot of time and a lot of stress and headache. So basically, she just kind of gave it a facelift. You know, the concept of the cubbies is still there. They still open the same, but now instead of having to build a cabinet door, she already had them and she just made a different front. And of course, like I said, the pools are one of my favorite parts of this build. I enjoy how they are bold, but they're still very minimalistic. And I think it's just the dimensions, like how long they are. So they're very visible. And then of course that against the white contrast, perfect. Number four. All right, so this actually reminds me a lot of my very own Kallax hack and I love the look of that faux cane or like wicker style on the cabinet doors. But this person, Daisha, actually went a step further and instead of doing rectangular shaped or square shaped cabinets, she added an arch over the top of her cabinet door. Now adding the arch makes this piece look so expensive. Like 
it's just a great idea to add dimension to a piece. Now by doing that, I really think she did a good job in balancing everything else because she didn't do any hardware. So she doesn't have any pools and she didn't do any um, cabinet legs on the bottom either. And I think it works really well with this piece because of the arch, right? Because if she didn't do the arch, then it would look kind of plain in my opinion. But because the arch is there, that's just the focal point and she just decided to do away with everything else. And by doing that, it also helps bring your cost down. Now, even though like pools and cabinet legs or legs for the cabinet aren't expensive, typically depending on you know your preference, it still helps because that's like 20, 30 bucks that you didn't have to spend. Now, of course, because the arch is gonna be a little more of an advanced kind of project, just keep in mind, but she does a really great job of explaining her step-by-step -step process. Number three. So first off, Star is a personal friend of mine and the style of this collax is everything. She went with very bold concepts just across the board. Bold color choice, bold cabinet pulls, and then a bold design using the slats on the front. Somehow with all of that, it's still not an overpowering piece. She did go with big doors, so instead of doing four smaller doors, she did two bigger ones. And instead of putting her pools in the typical place like you've seen in the ones that I've shared, she put them in the middle of her cabinet doors. And I think it just added an overall balance. Somehow for this to be so bold in so many different areas, it's still such a subtle and like immaculate piece. I think this would be really good if you ha if you are trying to bring color into a room or you have color in a room that you're trying to balance out because the design is still super unique, but somehow, like I said, it all plays together and it keeps the piece really subtle. Now, this build that Star did is probably going to be a few steps above beginner friendly just because some of the cuts were very specific. Um, but overall, Star just does an amazing job on all her projects, this one and many others, where she goes step by step and she's very thorough in how she breaks things down. Number two. Okay, so if I have not sold you on one of these designs being simple and easy and beginner friendly, I think this is gonna be the one for you. So for starters, this builder does an amazing job, just period, on breaking down her process from start to finish. On top of that, this is already a very simple build. She doesn't do anything crazy, nothing over the top, nothing too funky or wild. It's like a very bold piece that takes maybe three to four steps. Like I watched her video a few times just because her voice is so soothing. Now, although Chloe did this design in about three to four steps, I actually found a way that you could probably knock it down to about two. So as you can see, her design is just using a bold color on the Kallax shelf and then adding a wood countertop piece. Now, don't quote me on this, but I feel like, and it's probably even Ikea actually, that sells those countertop pieces. I've seen people use them in their kitchen or for their desk. And I feel like that will save you a step on having to buy wood, stain wood, and cut wood from like Home Depot. And so that's what I mean by that may save you like an extra step or two. If that doesn't work, like let's say the wood is too big that's already done at Ikea, I feel like this is um, a piece that you can have cut specifically to that size at Home Depot and or Lowe's and then you just take it home just like it is and you slap it on top and you screw it down and you're done. Either way, I just feel like it's just like I feel, I have this feeling that there's a step that you can shed, maybe even two. But regardless, this is like giving me very 70s vibe. I think this would look really great with like a vintage um, like record player and then put some of your records below in the storage. Put some of those little like stone or like cement pottery pieces below. I think that would be really cool. And again, you can go with a very bold color like this black or something just dark or gr grungy. Um, and it looks like it would be a great storage unit for somewhere, maybe like a music room that you have or a media room um, or something like that. Also to mention that Chloe uses no cabinets on this build, so that's saving you an expense again. Okay family, before we get to number one, I just wanted to stop and say thank you guys so much for hanging out through this video. As you know, I am typically the one behind the build, but I decided to come to you with something a little bit different. 
I know how hectic it can be when you're trying to find that inspiration for a specific piece or specific project in your home. So I hope that by providing this one-stop shop on some of the most trendiest flips for this IKEA Collax shelf will help you get that much closer to your specific idea. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Please don't be a stranger. And also, if one of these options work for you, let me know below which one you went with. As I mentioned before, every full video to all of these awesome designers is gonna be linked below as well as my very own Collax Furniture Flip. Now let's get back for number one. So I'll preface by saying that even though this is probably gonna be one of the most beginner-friendly options I give you today, this somehow still is one of the most unique options that I've seen so far. Also, at the beginning of the video, I told you to sit tight if you don't have very many tools at home, and I feel like I've given you a couple of options so far, and this is another one. So as you can see, this designer went a different route. Most of the options that I've shown you today have a big emphasis on the actual cabinet doors, but this person decided to put more emphasis on the backdrop. Now, since they have an open shelf concept as well, you can see straight through to this beautiful mandala inspired trace that this person did on the backboard. So to get that tracing on that backboard, she actually printed it out and then drew over it and then went back with like a darker marker. I think it was like navy blue or black. But if you don't wanna do that, I feel like there's a couple of different ways you can do it as well, maybe like freehanding. Regardless, I don't even believe that she painted her actual collax shelf. So that skips a step for you right there. And furthermore, this is a piece of plywood that she used on the back, but if you wanted to cut costs even more, even though it's already pretty inexpensive, I feel like you can replace that with like a poster board as well. So we kept those shelves open. There's an open shelf concept so you can see straight through to the backdrop. And of course, that's gonna be the focal point of this flip. Now something else that you're probably like squinting trying to figure out, she customized her shelf. So usually there are four cubbies across the top and four across the bottom, but instead of doing that, she pulled out one of those dividers on that top level and also on the bottom to make that middle cubby even bigger. So now it's like a two in one. So you have a full double-sized cubby. I think it works really well for where she put it. It's in her kitchen. So sometimes, you know, those serving bowls or something like that can take up more space than, than can fit in that little cubby. So this is so cool that it's now open and it also gives like a different dimension to this piece. It's so cute. I really love it. I love how she put it together and I like how it's so minimalistic. Like I said, kept the original color of the cabinet, didn't do any painting. It's amazing. All right, you guys, so we have reached the end of this video. As I mentioned before, I appreciate you being here, and I hope that this video puts you on track for your next build. Until next time, happy building.